What is up wildlife wanderers? With 2022 coming to a close, I thought this was a great opportunity to highlight some of my favorite wildlife experiences I captured over the past year. Now I started the year living on Vancouver Island and now as you can see, I'm in snowy frigid Alberta. I started this channel a year ago to get out more, capture more wildlife and work on my videography skills. It's been really fun and I've seen some great stuff. So without further ado, here's my top 10 wildlife moments from 2022. Number 10 is seeing long-tailed duck off the coast of Vancouver Island. One of my favorite parts about birding on Vancouver Island over this last year was shoreline birding the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean really is this gumpian box of chocolates. When you're birding, you never know what you're gonna see. In the winter, there's tons of species that are overwintering and spending time out on the ocean, surviving. Many of the birds that I was familiar with seeing on continental North America, I could see overwintering in the ocean for the first time, things like grebes and loons. And I saw quite a few lifers like brants and scoters, but one of my favorite was long-tailed duck, which is a species that evaded me for quite some time. I took a little trip down to Deep Bay and was successful in seeing a large group of long-tailed ducks. And I just had a great experience seeing them and watching them dive for a couple hours. And it was nice just having that close experience with them. I gotta say, I love Alberta, but I do miss being able to bird the Pacific Ocean and hang out by the water quite a bit. But Alberta still has some incredible wildlife to offer. Number nine on my list is seeing bohemian waxwings from my backyard. Bohemian waxwings are such a beautiful species. I was eating breakfast the other day and I looked up and there was this flock of hundreds of them right outside my window. I had to run out and grab my camera and chase them around the neighborhood. They're a fascinating species. They have beautiful plumage and their sociality is really interesting as well. Number eight was seeing a pretty rare bird, which is the yellow-billed loon. I took a trip with my wife to the north side of Vancouver Island. We stopped in Port McNeil and I decided it was a good opportunity to bird the harbor. And there was a lot of different loons hanging out, including common and Pacific loon, but mixed in among them was a yellow-billed loon, which is really an Arctic species. I don't think it's super uncommon to see them along the Pacific, but they certainly are rare-ish. It was great to see it and got some really close views right in the harbor, maybe 10 meters away from myself. So I think that was just another example of keeping your eyes open and you never know what you're gonna see. And maybe don't assume the identification of any bird. Take that closer look and maybe you'll find something rare. Number seven was finding a pygmy nuthatch in the Skaha Bluffs of the BC interior. My wife and I took the considerable journey between Calgary and Vancouver Island, taking the Crow's Nest Highway, Highway 3 through Southern BC. And despite the fact that we were on a timeline and had to get from A to B in a certain number of days, we did spend the morning exploring the Skaha Bluffs outside of Penticton. And I have to say, I was pretty awestruck by its beauty. There's grasslands, rocky outcrops, and ponderosa pines. I definitely wanna go back there and do some birding, hiking, and maybe even some climbing. We only had about three hours that morning to go birding. So despite our limited time, I saw quite a few lifers, including pygmy nuthatch. It was really cool to see a new nuthatch species after really only seeing red-breasted and white-breasted throughout all my life. It's an adorable little creature. They're tiny, diminutive birds, and they gave us some good views. So number six is seeing Buick's wren. I looked all over Vancouver Island for this wren for weeks, and it was just evading me despite being a relatively common species out there. I love wrens, they just are so boisterous and they have a lot of attitude for being a tiny little bird. For whatever reason, I just was having a hard time detecting it. That was until one morning of birding where I had walked for kilometers. I was just ready to turn around when I heard one of the birds singing. I saw a pair hanging out and I had some really great views. It was funny, it was on a road and I had my tripod set up and people kept stopping and saying, oh, what are you looking at? maybe thinking it was an owl or something and I had to explain it was a Buick's wren and they didn't seem very impressed but regardless it was a good example of just persevering not giving up with your target species I found it in the end and I actually had some good views after that at some other locations before I left the island my number five wildlife moment of 2022 was finding a northern pygmy owl a lifer and a pretty sweet owl and the reason it was special to me was I'd got a little distracted with the move and starting a new job and I'm sorry to say that my birding went by the wayside for a couple months there. And so one cold November morning, I decided to go out and the very first bird I saw was a northern pygmy owl. And so maybe that was the universe just saying I should get back and start birding again a little more seriously, get recording some videos. Maybe that sounds dumb, but 
It was the very first bird I saw that day and just a reminder of why it's nice to get out and see what you can find. So number four was seeing a pod of orcas right off the coast of Vancouver Island. Orcas are just such an incredible animal. There's not many creatures more badass than an orca, let alone a dozen of them frolicking in the surf. I saw that someone had seen a pod off the coast of Campbell River. I grabbed my camera and tripod and ran out to the pier and me and about a dozen other people enjoyed the spectacle of the whales. There were reports that they were hunting porpoises that day, although that's not something I saw, but it was amazing seeing them swim throughout the ocean. Now, number three was an incredible wildlife spectacle, including many different species, and that was the Pacific herring spawning run. So herring are these small fish and each spring they congregate to reproduce. Basically, they just exude their reproductive material out. One of the funniest things about it was seeing rafts of sea lions just completely gorged on herring and unable to move. It was this really weird looking thing, almost like a sea monster with all these flippers sticking straight in the air. And the number of gulls we saw were in the thousands, bald eagles, dive bombing, it was incredible. So if you ever are on Vancouver Island or in the Pacific Northwest somewhere where the Pacific herring are ready to spawn, you should get out there because it is a incredible experience. Now number two was on that same trip to the North Island I mentioned before, and that was spending a morning with sea otters at Coal Harbor. Coal Harbor is this little settlement on an inlet on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And we stayed at this little bed and breakfast. It was so quiet there. And we woke up and it was this foggy morning and there was a family of sea otters right outside our door. We spent the morning watching the sea otters hunt, play, crack open the clams with rocks. It was really fantastic. That was the first time I'd ever seen that species and it was really, really incredible. They're just adorable. They're surprisingly large. I was taken away by how big they actually seem. I, you know, you see videos of them and I don't think you really get a sense of scale, but they're quite big. And they were just meters from us and there was no one else around and it was a really special morning. So number one relates to my favorite group of birds and that is the North American wood warblers. I love forest birds. I love neotropical migrants. They're really my favorite and of all of those, I love the warblers the best. And so it was an incredible experience to seeing black-throated gray warbler for the first time. This is a species that flipping through my field guides that I always said I wanted to see. And I had a few opportunities over the past year to spend time with them and watch them forage and fly around the forest. And it was really incredible. It was really my number one highlight of 2022. Now, you know, I think that really shows you how much I like warblers comparing that to orcas and sea otters and all those other incredible birds, but it, that really was my number one moment. So I'm really looking forward to springtime, this forest changing and the warblers to come back because here in Alberta, we even have more species that come through to enjoy. So I really look forward to that. I do have a bonus wildlife experience. Now, unfortunately, I was not taking video of this because I was really focused on survival. We did a summer hike at a hike called Black Prince, and we ran to two grizzly bears on the trail. And it was funny because we initially ran into them up on an alpine meadow and then went down. We, we decided not to bug them, and so we just kind of retreated. And then we went for a swim, and halfway through my swim, I heard a splash, and the one of the bears, which was the cub, um, had jumped in the water. So now I can say that I went swimming with grizzly bears. So just to sum things up, 2022 was an incredible year. I'm really looking forward to capture more wildlife and starting here in the winter, there's lots to enjoy here in Alberta despite the temperatures and short days at this time of year. So stay tuned for more nature content like this. Thanks for watching. I really want to evolve the channel in the new year. So I'm gonna be looking for new ways to capture the incredible nature that surrounds us all. And until next time, happy birding, happy naturing, and happy new year.